Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody um, is doing great. So, you know, we, we do these, you know, we do these broadcasts uh, for the trader, okay? Um, you know, look, there's, there's 400,000 financial sites out there, okay? You can go out there and see uh, what the market did, uh, you know, the Tesla earnings breakdown, uh, you know, what we're having for coming up for next week, uh, the, the announcement recently in the last, I guess, in the last hour about uh, Mnuchin uh, announcing an additional stimulus package uh, as early as Monday. So all that stuff is out there. Okay, you can go to any site, CNBC, whatever the case may be. You know, we, I, I try to direct this broadcast specifically to the trader of what we go through. Okay, and there's been something on my mind since Friday around 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe even a little earlier than that. And it's, it, it really took me about three days, two and a half days to kind of get over it. I'm, I'm literally still talking about it now, but that's kind of my process. That's the way I kind of uh, deal with everything. So when you're, when you're a little kid, four, five, six years old, you first pick up that bat and you fall in love with baseball, okay? And you go in a little league, every little league, six, seven year old kid, their dream is to become a major league player, right? They have their idols, uh, you know, Derek Jeter, who, who are Mike Trout, whoever it is, right? They have their idols. That's their goal, okay? Uh, when you're in high school and you fall in love with the idea of law, okay, you want to become an attorney, that's your goal, right? You start, you know, you start applying uh, everything to political science. That's your major. Uh, you go, you try, apply to law school, and one day your goal is to become an attorney. And if, if you're if you're really really good at what you do, and your career goes on fast track, you're going to wind up the end game. Okay, you're going to wind up as probably general counsel of a major company. That's the end game. Okay. Unfortunately, when you're a trader, there is no end game. Okay, there absolutely is no prize. There is no reward. Okay. And the most important part is it's a game without a trophy, okay? There is no prize at the end of the tunnel. And the most important part is when you're a trader and you first start, you start romanticizing this business, okay? What it could be, what your life could be. But then the reality is nobody tells you this, that you need to put in minimum 10 years of work to kind of get comfortable in your own skin with the losses, uh, with everything, with everything, be really, really comfortable in your own skin. So there is no end game, okay? There is no prize. You had a good trade, do it again. You had a good week, do it again. You had a good month, do it again. You had a good year, do it again. It's a never ending battle, okay, versus you versus the market, okay? There is no finish line, there is no trophy, there is no storybook ending at the game, okay? Can you do very, very well in this business? Absolutely, but it's going to take time. You have to put in at least a decade for that to really come into fruition, okay? Um, and something that keeps on reminding me over and over again, again, I'm, I'm still talking about this from Friday morning. Um, Friday was an incredibly amount of value, okay? And we'll talk about the pivots in a few minutes. And it really does show, you know, and I'm going on my 21st year, it really does show you how much mental equity you really need to apply every single day to a, to a trading session. You could have the greatest plan in the world. You could see the market perfectly. You know, it was a very, very solid week. There's nothing, I, I don't wanna take away from the, the really good value of the week. Very, very solid week, okay? Very, very pleased with the week. The problem is every single day you are expected to bring your A game, and if not, you're not supposed to trade, okay? I woke up Friday morning, very good week, incredibly tired, really tired. I mean, that that's, my brain was completely on zero. That's not an excuse, the market doesn't care, okay? You had a bad night's sleep, 
The market doesn't care. You woke up with a bellyache. The market doesn't care. You had a fight with your wife. The market doesn't care. Okay. You got fired from your job. The market doesn't care. The market is there to take your money, disconnect you from your money and keep it moving, right? It's a rotation. Okay? One person in, one person out, one person in, one person out. So all these factors, the market doesn't care about you. Okay. So the reality is for you to be and again, the word success is very, very subjective. Okay. You can have enough money to live for the rest of your world. A lot of people talk about that as success. You can just be a happy go lucky person, have your bills paid, go on vacation, put your kids through school. That's success. So every person defines success a different way. But if you want to have longevity in this business, okay. Um, you have to understand that if you are not mentally sharp, you are not mentally ready for the day, whether it's technically, emotionally, whatever the case may be, there's a very high probability that the market is going to do very, very aggressive things to you. Okay. And Friday proved to me again, and it's not the first time, it's not going to be the last time that we don't know what our capabilities are until we stop making really, really basic mistakes. Okay. Now it starts with, for example, year one, you know, a lot of new traders are going to have a lot more aggressive, basic mistakes. So for example, you know, if you're a new trader, you're probably going to chase the hot stock. The, the, the advanced trader is going to be selling that stock too, and, and vice versa. So there's a lot of patterns of how many mistakes you can make from year one. And obviously as time goes by, it gets easier. You start eliminating those mistakes. But again, we are human. And when you are human, you're going to laugh like everybody else. You're going to cry like everybody else. So you're going to be depressed and happy and you're going to run all the gamuts of emotion and you're human and you're going to make mistakes. Okay. We've accepted that, but it is so frustrating still at this advanced age and advanced, advanced tenure in this business that there's that mistake that you keep on making over and over again, you make it five times a year, three times a year, but you're going to make it. And the most basic thing is breaking whatever rule you have. So you might, in my process, it's all about execution. Okay. We found an arbitrage in these pivots. And for all you guys who've been uh, in the live webinar for about 10 years, um, and a lot of you guys who've been following us on social media, there's, there's a reason why these things work very, very well. Okay. But the most important part of these pivots is the execution. It's incredibly important. You can't skip step two to get a step three. You need to watch step one, step two to three, and finally get the check mark to make sure the trade works out very, very well. And when you look at the trades from Friday, they were so damn good, right? So what's the problem? There was a trade I did on the video. Okay. Um, there was a trade I did on the video that I went in because of an anticipation of a move and the PS 60 theory or PS 60 process, you need a second entry. I dwell that point. I drive that point into the traders brains that the second entry will give you the highest probability because the first move, right? The first trigger are stops being triggered. So you need that second wave of buyers or second wave of sellers, depending which way you're going to make sure that you're not the only kid jumping into the pool. Okay. You want to make sure there's a second wave, the cavalry coming that you know that you are on the right side of the trade. And unfortunately, because there were, there were such aggressive moves on Monday, I anticipated a trade on the video. Okay. And it cost me a pretty good amount of money, right? It cost me a pretty good penny. Um, and the most amazing part is I knew subconsciously I was wrong going into it the first time around. I didn't want to miss the moves that I saw of the, of the pivots that I was missing. And I was trying to play catch up. Okay. I was trying to will my way in the directional bias of where I saw the action was going to be. And once again, okay, you could get lucky once, you could get lucky twice and I don't care what type of trader you are, or what type of process you are trading. If you break even the most specific little, little rule, right? That it doesn't seem like it's a big deal at the time. You might make money once on it. You might make money twice on it again, right? Anticipating the move, 
But overall, remember, the casino is always going to win, okay? And Friday, I broke the most basic rule uh, in the PS60 theory, and the pivot worked. The pivot worked for $3. The problem is I went from step one all the way to step three, and the problem is I eliminated step two, and step two is the one that killed me, right? Step two is the one that killed me. And it took me literally, and again, it's, it's what? Sunday morning, it's 10, 15 in the morning. This is three days later. I'm still talking about it because again, that's the way I try to rationalize what I did. That's the way I try to um, compute of the stupidity that if I continue to do something like that over and over again, over a longer term period of time, all it's gonna do is cause me a lot of mental anguish. And again, that's what we're trying to convey to the newer trader here, okay? It's not about the trade, okay? It's about you having the ability to sustain your levels of rules. If you break rules, you will die. Again, we've said this again numerous times in the past, and for some reason, my thick skull Every, you know, every quarter, every, you know, four or five months has the same thing over and over again. So if you're a new trader and you're constantly breaking your old rules and you know you're doing a poor job at it, okay, don't worry. Ten years later, you will still be breaking those rules. The good news is you're going to be breaking those rules a lot less. And the good news is the half, you know, the glass half empty, uh, glass half full part of it is, well, I'll, you know, I'm conscious of this now. It's probably not going to happen to me for the next two, three months. Okay, so that's a good news. But eventually, again, I know I'm going to catch FOMO. And even at this advanced stage of my career, and again, two decades, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's pretty, pretty advanced compared to a lot of people. Okay, I'm still going to do it again. And the most amazing part is we know we're going to do it. And we still can't stop ourselves from doing this. So if you find yourself, if you're a new trader and you're trading for two, three years, okay, don't worry about it. The mistakes you're making now, except you will continue to make them down the road. But the good news is you're going to make them less and less as time goes by. Again, time will make you whole. Will it make you 100% whole? Absolutely not. Will you get that trophy at the end of your career? Absolutely not. Will you get that... Um, that conviction that you you finally made it probably not okay this is a this is again a thankless business okay there is no trophy there is no finish line there is no you know top of the mountain you're constantly proving to yourself what you can possibly do if you continue to trade poorly and act on impulse instead of acting on technicals and again technicals at the end of the day are going to be your your savior, your lifeline, okay, your champion, your white knight, okay. The faster you realize that you can't will the market to do what you want to do, you can't will your trade to do what you want to do, and stick to your rules, stick to your process, whatever that process is, okay. The faster you finally come to that realization that it will happen again, but over time it's going to get easier. That's at least where you're going to start maturing as a trader. So am I going to break rules on Monday, tomorrow? No, I'm not, okay, because I'm very, very conscious of it. But, you know, I have to accept the idea that I have to be mentally sharp every single day. Um, you can't turn a premium day um, into, a, a, into a day that you break a major rule and take a pretty, you know, pretty penny loss on, on one specific trade. Um, and it's a constant reminder that Monday morning, you know, we have to be sharp. Tuesday morning, we have to be sharp. We can't slack and we can't rely on what we did the previous day, the previous week, the previous month, and think it's going to be okay. The market's relentless. It will destroy you, okay? It will destroy you financially. It will destroy you mentally. And it's our job to really understand that this is on the table every single day. And if we don't feel like trading, don't trade. If you don't feel uh, up to par, don't trade. If you're not mentally focused, do not trade. It's a sign of maturity. It's not a sign of weakness. And again, got to get into our big, beautiful skulls that this is going to happen again. Um, other than that, you know, and again, this is therapeutic for me. Okay. A lot of traders don't have another, you know, another trader to talk to, or they don't have, um, you know, any other form to kind of vent their feelings and they keep it inside. And what they do is they bring it over. They carry it over to the next trading day. This is my healing process. If I can't discuss my feelings, if I can't discuss what I'm going through 
with other traders. Well, what the hell is the point of this, right? What the hell is the point of having people in your corner? What's the, the point of having people understand? Again, nobody cares, okay, about what we do except for other traders, okay? Again, your wife doesn't want to hear it. Your husband doesn't want to hear it. Your dog doesn't want to hear it. You have to rely on other people. You have to have a good foundation. You've got to have a good nucleus. And again, the further, the fastest you can realize what's going on, the faster you'll be able to at least put a Band-Aid on it, okay? Um, pacify it for a little bit. It will happen again, but at least we're conscious now going forward that again, Monday morning, I got to have my A-plus game. Other than that, it was actually a pretty good week, okay? Pretty good week. Um, earnings season kicked off. Uh, we saw earnings with Netflix, with Tesla. Uh, this week coming up, we got a big, big, you know, we had Microsoft earnings, Intel earnings, which is amazing that Intel, Microsoft had crappy, really, really you know, crappy numbers, or at least crappy uh, results on their numbers. And the market actually held it very well. If you look at uh, the indexes throughout the week, uh, again, really not that horrible. 1% uh, losses pretty much across the board. The key level here is what the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, uh, did on a closing basis. Again, you can make an argument again. We you know, had this hammer, we sold off, we confirmed, but this is actually the first close underneath this whole rising wedge since March. Okay, so this is kind of a big deal. And I think Monday morning, if you're charting, you'll notice a lot of, a lot of things that happen. Uh, you'll notice a lot of stocks putting in hammers off you know, a lot of levels. So, for example, uh, Amazon, right, reclaimed. You look at, for example, uh, BYND, right, reclaimed. You look, for example, uh, a stock like Netflix, reclaimed, right, reclaimed. Uh, so, th there's a lot of names. Uh, you could go through, you know, a lot of charts. You'll see a lot of, you know, a lot of similarities. This is actually very, very bullish in a, in a weird way, um, how the stocks reacted fighting back. But the only problem is now they have to reclaim macro and that reclaim macro area is going to be this uh, 257 level on the queues. This is the area now. This is the line in the sand uh, for the bulls to get really, really healthy. Because again, if we gap up on Monday and there's a, there's a shot that we do, again, I'm doing this uh, video at 10, 15 in the morning. So I, I don't, you know, we don't, we don't know what kind of news we're going to have throughout Sunday. Again, we had that news uh, break about an hour ago. Uh, Mnuchin talking about more possible stimulus uh, in the second round. Uh, as early as Monday, so maybe that gives a jolt to the markets, but we don't know how the futures are going to react and what other macro news uh, can break from now uh, till the start of uh, the, the cash session uh, this evening. So we don't know. But ultimately, for the for the bulls to really reclaim this whole trend, we have to reclaim this 257 level. This, you know, what, what this support was, now it's supply. And for the bulls to have an upside bias, we need a 257 close. If we get rejected there, then we're going to start rolling over and obviously. Uh, the downside areas, you know, 244, 245 on the queue. So it's very, very important. Other than that, very, very good week. Other than my, you know, stupid Nvidia, Nvidia debacle. Well, let's get, let's get to the pivots, and you'll see some really, really good action. I mean, incredible action. Okay, it's just, it really does show you how one chain of events can really put you on tilt. Uh, and again, maybe I'm over being dramatic. But again, it's more of the execution, it's more of the mental mindset than any individual trade. And the bottom line is it's your overall uh, technical approach, the way it's going to set you. So if you look at, uh, if you look at uh, Friday's pivots, there was actually some really good stuff. And this is why I'm very, very disappointed in me in my, in my execution. So uh, first and foremost, congratulations for all you guys who came in uh, long uh, Netflix puts obviously the big you know, the big line in the sand from Thursday was that 484 486 level and uh, you know stock opened down went down to the you know four you know four six high four sixties really really nice move here so I caught this trade really well here on Tesla the problem was I was trying to make back my Nvidia loss um, 405 line in the sand experience traders only and again. Isn't this ironic? I didn't go in on the first move. I went in on the second entry, right? Second entry, second entry, second entry. In the video, I went on the first entry, right? 1405 line in the sand, experienced traders only, um, possible move to 1376. So here was Tesla. It put in its initial move 
Uh, so 14.05 was the pivot, right? So 14.05 was the high, low here, 14.05 was low here. If you guys remember, it put in its initial move to about 14.01 and then bounced, right? Right? Bounced this 14.07, 14.08. So that 14.01, 14.00 was the second entry. So I got short, uh, I got short Tesla and it got murdered. It got absolutely murdered. The problem is obviously I'm trading less size than Tesla than I am. I went full size on the video. I'll explain it to you in a second. Um, so it sucked. So it sucked. So I, I, I netted out, you know, I netted out and, and I covered, I covered too early. I was just trying to make as much back as, as possible in the video. Um, so I covered early. My, my lowest cover was down like, like down like 12 or so. Uh, and it sounds great. It looks great on paper. But again, I'm trading Tesla a lot smaller than I'm trading the video just because of the average range. So it actually went, if, if I would have held it again, if, if my uncle, if my aunt had should be my uncle. So the idea, yeah, if I held it through all the way the whole move, yeah, I would have been really, really good on the on the trade, but I didn't. Obviously, 35 point move down. When you're playing from behind, you're just trying to chip away, um, and that was the problem. But again, really, really good pivot there um, at the time. Uh, Amazon uh, 29.37 for builds below can flush. Now again, I didn't take Amazon because again, I was fighting with Nvidia, and this is all and this is all part of the game. Have one. One individual incident can really affect the whole a whole day. So uh, it takes out 37, and the stock gets murdered. It goes down to 28.88. Again, look how one single event can change the whole the whole landscape of the day. So that got destroyed. Uh, Netflix uh, 470 field builds below can flush. That got obviously uh, that really really got smacked all the way down to 467. Uh, so again, you can see I really screwed up a premium day here. Uh, Beyond, fantastic guys, Gr great job for all you guys who came in. Uh, short Beyond puts uh, 124. Uh, that 125 macro was a huge number, but 124, 30, 124. If it builds below, can flush more. Here was Beyond, right? Here was Beyond. Here's the 124. Got all the way down uh, to 120 and change. So really, really big move there. Uh, Facebook 229. If it builds below, can flush more. Here was Facebook destroyed. So again, I'm, I'm sitting there with a premium day and I completely destroyed everything. 229 uh, went down to 226 and change. Again, it wasn't the pivots that messed me up. It was my execution. Uh, Alibaba 244.34, 244. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Alibaba, right? Here's the 244 and it goes all the way down to 241 and change. Uh, NVIDIA. So here it is, right? Here's the NVIDIA trade. And it wasn't the pivot that was wrong. It was my execution. So, yeah. So here it is, right? 394, if it builds below, can flush. There was nothing wrong on it. And if you look at, if you look at the pivot, you say to yourself, wow, Dan, great job, right? Here's the, here, right? Three, 394, 394, 394. And it goes down to 391. So what's wrong? Great trade, right, Dan? The problem is I went in on the first shot, okay? I started hitting those 394 levels and it goes down like 60, 70 cents, right? So it put in, uh, it put in a new low of like 393.20s, whatever it was, okay? So that was the first move. That was the second entry. 393 was actually second entry. Instead, they spread me out and went all the way back to 397. Now again, you turn around and say, what's the big deal? It's only three points. Well, I was in full size of those three points. And when you spread and you get spread out in the video in full size and three dollars, uh, it's not a good thing. And the most amazing part, and here's the irony: if I followed my rules, if I followed the process, I would have taken the second entry. Da 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 da. I would have taken the worst case. Worst case, I would have taken down a couple. Right? I would have taken a couple points, break even on the balance. Nobody cares. I would have had a really good day. But again, brain fart. You're human. Life goes on. But again, we have to be conscious of our fall. So again, you can see how quickly, again, one little isolated uh, incident can have a whole domino effect of what happens here. Uh, 363, again, you can see the pivots were phenomenal on Friday. I just screwed up. Uh, 363 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush more. Here was Apple, right? Here's a 363. Here's 363. It goes all the way down to 356. Destroyed. Apple got absolutely murdered. Uh, AMD was actually really good to the upside. Uh, 6, 6, uh, 6480, 65 needs to build for more upside. Uh, AMD exploded, right? Really, really exploded. So here's a 6480. Yeah, went to 70 bucks. Big, big move on AMD. Congratulations for you guys who caught that as well. Even this little piece of crap before it rolled over had a nice move here. Uh, ABUS, uh, 765, 77 needs to build. Um, oops. So here was ABUS, 
right? So here was the, you know, here was the seven, excuse me, here was the, where the hell was it? Oh, here it is. Uh, seven, right? Seven sixty-five. The damn thing went to uh, nine dollars before it rolled over. So even that was uh, actually pretty good as well. Uh, ABUS. So you could clearly see I just really messed up a premium day. Uh, GRAF went down to like fifteen thirties. Nice move in that. Um, yeah, Tesla got destroyed. Facebook got hit. Um, Beyond got hit, Boeing I still like, never got there. Now again, because of what happened to me in the video, it completely took out, took me out of my game. Completely took me out of my game. 14.38, okay, 14, just to give you an exa example here. 14.38, I got long Tesla, okay? It only went up $3. That's it, at one point, okay? Um, Went down five, so I wound up. So I netted out. The most amazing part is I netted out probably about six bucks on 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 Tesla, which sucked, which absolutely sucked considering what it did. And then I never got back into it when they finally confirmed back to fourteen forty five. All it did was go back to fourteen sixty eight. So I didn't need that as well. So again, one little isolated incident, yada 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 yada. So yeah, my, just wasn't my finest outing. Uh, Netflix had a really nice move here. Uh, 482 needs to build. Here was Netflix. Um, here was Netflix, right? Here's the 482. Uh, went to 487. Uh, Amazon 2970. There was a big pivot to the downside, big pivot to the upside. 2970 needs to build. Look at the upside pivot on Amazon. So again, I just took a monster premium day. Pfft, messed it up. 29, uh, 2987 went to 30, uh, 30, 30. Huge move. Huge, huge move there as well. Uh, yeah, 3,000 supply coming up, 86 supply coming up, uh, yeah, even Zoom had a nice little pop, uh, quick little pop here, 248.50, 249, uh, went to like 251 and change, right, here, went right to supply, those are just meant to be a quick trade here, yeah, point and a half, so, uh, so you can get the point, you know, you get the point here, Roku, I still like Roku, uh, I said take on the way up, uh, even, oh, excuse me, I, I, my, my, I feel like this is my best trade of the day. Uh, ATNM, um, I started buying this stock at 52 cents. Um, somebody bet the 250 calls. These, I, the one thing I've been making money on, on, on these little small cap sweeps, they've been really, really good. Um, so I got long at 52 cents. Uh, I took a quarter off uh, after hours at 57 cents. Um, actually, it looks pretty good. Who knows? Maybe they run this thing up. I know they have some sort of leukemia something or other uh, in the next several weeks. So that was up. Uh, oh yeah. So again, so here is here is the salt on the wound, right? Fourteen twenty four sneaky area. Five minute support is four eighteen. If it builds below, can flush. Four fifteen now is line in the sand. Look what Tesla does. Congratulations, all you guys who caught this move here. So look what Tesla does, right? So the four fifteen here. Let me show you on the five minutes so you get get a little better idea. You see this whole fourteen fifteen area, right? That was the line in the sand. Once it broke that four fifteen. It only put up a $12 candle in a few minutes, so yeah. So Tesla was actually a monster trader on Friday, and you know, I just messed up the whole day. I just literally messed up the whole day. Uh, obviously, take on the way down, $12 candle. So solid week, um, really solid week. Friday, I, I still, again, <laughs> three days later, I'm still talking about it. But again, guys, it's, it's just so important to identify um, your mental deficiencies and really work on them. Again, is it going to happen to me tomorrow? Probably not. Is it going to happen to me a week from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now? Probably not. But eventually it's going to happen. But again, as a new trader, just understand this is going to be part of your business, okay, for a long time until time will make you whole, right? Seven, 10, 12 years. That's the overnight success everybody talks about. It's not the person. Uh, who has a lucky trade. It's all about longevity and you're going to hit a lot of potholes. Okay. So stop romanticizing this business. There is no prize. You have to work on being a better you. And that's the name of the game. Guys, God bless. Uh, hopefully we'll get some really good value on Monday for all you guys who are joining us. Okay. 9 a.m. starts morning strategy and with God's help, I'll see you there. Take care. guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.